Sit, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to hear this. I had this stroke about three years ago, and I went 90% blind, as I told you before. 90% blind. Couldn't preach no more. Six months, I couldn't drive a car. I couldn't, I couldn't read my Bible. I, I was just 90% blind. I was so devastated by that. And I'm an upbeat guy. I don't get depressed. I, I just don't get depressed. I don't go like Pentecostals. I don't do any of that crap. I'm not doing any of that junk. That ain't going to happen with me. But I just got so overwhelmed by the fact that I couldn't read my Bible. I couldn't preach. I didn't know whether I had lost the church, whether I had to resign it. I didn't know what to do. The doctors couldn't fix me. I damaged all these neurons in the back part of my brain. and said, you're just dead meat. And I was sitting at my, at my little desk at my house. And I got so overwhelmed. I, started, I became almost hysterical in crying. I took my glasses off and I started sobbing and I sobbed and I sobbed and the tears were running down my face, off my chin. My eyes were swollen shut. I was just in the office by myself, sobbing, sobbing. How am I going to take care of Patty? Well, how am I going to pay the bills? What am I going to do? I can't preach. I can't teach. I can't write any more books. I, I can't even drive a car. I don't, they say that I'm never going to get any better. I don't know what to do. God in heaven. Why have you let this happen to me? What's going on? And I sobbed and sobbed. And my little daughter, backslidden daughter, walked into the office and said, Dad, Dad, are you okay? What's the matter? I said, I'm just devastated that I've had this stroke and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to do it. And she went and told her mother. The next day, now my mother, where's, where's Sister uh, uh, Woodward, where's Sister Wood? She's you just like Patty Arnold. You are you just you, you're both librarians. That's what you are. You're both Pentecostal librarians. And my wife is extremely low keyed, but godly. Just low keyed. I'm boisterous. I'm I'm ballistic. Man, I'm rocking and rolling. I dance in I dance in a Publix. <laughs> my wife can be shopping somewhere, trying to get toilet tissue or toothpaste, and I'll just get to thinking about God. I go, hey, look out now, whoa. I'm walking down in Publix the other day, and I'm just saying, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this lady passed me by. She said, did you say something? I said, I wasn't talking to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When I went off the platform after I resigned, I went and sat in the audience with my wife. Well, I sat right next to her. That's like, like the refrigerator section. Nothing happens there. You know, just... And every time the preacher's preaching, I'm going, I like that. That's good. All right. And they say something else. Somebody sings, I'm on my feet. I'm just, yeah, let's go. And my wife turns to me and says, would you be quiet? You are embarrassing the fire out of me. This is the quiet section. I said, this ain't the quiet section. This is the refrigerator section. If you stay here long enough, you're going to die of frostbite. You, you people need to get out of here. And I'm... I went back on a platform just to save my soul. That's what I did. <laughs> now, I know some of you have your own seats, and that's where you, and the reason you sit there is because nothing happens. <laughs> you want to have a child. Next time you come to church, go sit next to some new converts. They'll give you a heart attack. <laughs> They'll jump up and say, man, I was a whoremonger and now I'm saved. I was selling drugs and now I'm life is hurt. My life was messed up. I've been through four marriages, 16 kids, and God snatched me out. Some of you people need to start praising God for being snatched out. You didn't just come to the church. Nobody can come except God draws them. God snatches people out of darkness. Woo! Now, I've said all that to say this. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I said all that to say this. After me snotting and slobbering and crying and bawling and feeling sorry for myself, fun. Now, my wife, she doesn't quote scripture. She doesn't write choruses. She doesn't have visions and dreams. She just pastors Jeffrey. <laughs> and I walk out, sister, sister, I walk out into my office the next morning. She has a little note sitting on my desk. She never tells me how to pastor. She tells me when I do lousy. She never tells me when I do good. You know, so I just have to have me and Jesus take care of that. And on the desk, she has this written, change my life. Jeffrey, I know this past year has been tough. And we've had experiences that we wish had not had happened. But please listen to me. Maybe that's why the windshield in your car is bigger and brighter than your mirror 
Because where you're going is greater than where you've been. I'm sorry for what happened in your yesterday, but your tomorrow has got more promise in it than your mistakes of yesterday. And the devil is a liar. He can't be forgiven. You can be forgiven. He can't go to glory. You can go to glory. He can't have the victory. You can have the victory. Windshield. Where I'm going is greater than where I've been. Oh, oh, yeah. Are you hearing me?